right okay we're recording good okay so the second part is the solving part now that we've made a model so making a model is one part that we need in the standard the other part is solving which we've which we've also been working on so if we look and we should have really read this over the the um read over the whole thing before we started but anyway that's fine we haven't read this at all this last part there is a type of bacteria that's only bred in the geyser pool between 25 and 45 degrees at that time the geyser is closed we want to use the model to find when both geysers are closed at the same time okay so this is when um our desmos model is good because we can see both geysers there's uh the simple one geyser geyser one is the that one and there's geyser two is the the red one and we can see how they both work at the same same time when one is up the other one's not quite working in sync there's sometimes where they're the exact same temperature and um, things like that so so what we have to do really is we need to look at when figure out when one geyser is at those said temperatures and then the other and then see where they match up and the easiest way to do that really is to make a table is to look at one at a time so let's look at what we're calling geyser one so when it's between 25 and 45 degrees so if we look at here this is 10 so 25 is somewhere about here this is 45 there i mean 55 there so 45 somewhere about there so we'll just draw a line cool and so then we can see it's at 45 here it's at 25 there it's at 25 again here it's at 45 here again and because this is one whole period we only need to look at that one whole period because it's just going to keep repeating every period so it's going to repeat every 30 uh what is it minutes okay so we want to know it's closed between these times so it's closed between 45 and 25 degrees so it's closed along there once it's below 25 degrees it's not cold so again once it gets up to 25 degrees it's closed and then once it gets above 45 degrees it's open again so there we go so that's basically what we need to know so we need to know this time we need to know this time and then we need to know this time and this time because it's closed between there and there and it's closed between there and there once we know those times then we know all of the other times and so now that's really easy to calculate so if we're looking at here we're going to put a y equals 25 y equals 45 and we can just click on here and we can see there we go 16.07 minutes 18.5 ish minutes and it's at tw uh, 25 there and there so it's closed between here and here and between here and here so the key thing now is interpreting that in context and showing what we're solving so now if i just scroll where did it go just a sec right there we go um if we go over here we see this is showing that we know what we're talking about now when the geyser is at 45 degrees so we're solving that equation equal to 45 now if i wasn't using desmos if i was solving it algebraically i would get this one first um, and then i would have to figure it out but um, if we're just using desmos we're just going to straight away get these times so we've got all of those times easy there's the there's the first time there's the second time the third time continuing on now if we have a look those this time here and this time here is what we read on desmos and then if you look at all the other times we're just adding 30 aren't we so 16 plus 30 is 46 and then the next time this is going to be repeated that one another 30 so every second one that's just going to add 30 there if we if we look on desmos we can we can see what's happening there so the first time it's at 45 is there and boom boom oh, sorry I don't, I don't think you can see my mouse cursor there okay i just realized you can see my mouse cursor so it's all good anyway so that first point at 16 and then the next time it repeats itself down up down you can see is 
30 seconds later because that's the period down up down 30 seconds okay so we can easily we can easily read those off of there but also just when we make our table of values it's very easy to just find this one here and just go so 16 plus 30 gives me that one plus 30 gives me that one again um okay and then the exact same with this one so at this point here it's 28 seconds it's going up down then up again so it's repeated itself there so that's where it's starting to go back up again after 30 seconds and so the next one's going to repeat after 30 seconds hence why again 28 we just add 30 then we just add 30. Um, sometimes it's hard to know how many points to do which is why we sort of go back to what's the question asking use the models of these geysers to find when both geysers are closed at the same time so it's not actually telling us within a certain amount of time so i don't know we just look at a few okay to start with and then of course the other times we are we are finding is when it's at 25 and it's the same thing we're just finding when that equation equals 25 and then all we're doing is reading those first times off of desmos and now we're just adding 30 add another 30 etc and now this one adding 30 adding another 30 the same the same idea as that okay so these guys are one and so this means the geyser is closed right when it's between 45 and 25 so so looking at so looking at that between 45 and 25 so the geyser is closed between 16 and 18 between 28 and 26 oh that that way it's the other way isn't it between 46 and 48 between 56 and 58 right cool and we look at geyser number two and again geyser number two is closed when it's above 20 is it 25 which is about there and when it's below 45 which just happens to be the mean the, where it's at the middle so we've already kind of got an idea of that so it's closed again between here and here and between here and here between those values and those values exact we're doing the exact same thing again so i'm not going to re-explain that okay and so then basically all we're doing is we need to show what we're solving so we're solving when geyser 2 is at 45 degrees which is at the mean so i don't need to actually write the equation and again this is if i was doing it algebraically i would have found this and then gone there but um when i'm looking at it on desmos i get 27 and 57 is the first one because now it's a good idea to just get that away and there we go so you can see it's 27 57 is when it's at 45 and 32 and 52 is when it's at 25 so that's where 27 57 and then at 25 i'm solving when that equation equals 25 so that's what i've read off desmos and then because i know the period is 60 all i have to do is just add 60 and i've got the next one add 60 and i've got the next one of course i i can and i do the same thing here add 60 add 60. of course i can just read those off desmos but if we're drawing a big table like that sometimes it's just easier to add 60 isn't it so now if we have a look at that we can kind of write them together so this is now my information you can see geyser one is closed between all of these times and geyser two is closed with these these times geyser two it has a much longer um period so it's not closed as much so let's sort of look at that so 27 and 26 right 27 is within this time period right 27 is there and 28 is within this time period too right so that means between 27 and 28.93 seconds they're they're both closed right because after 28.93 seconds which is within this time period geyser one's going to be open but geyser two is not okay so now looking at this one i just realized if i use my cursor it's better 
uh, we got 52 to 57. It's close. So obviously between these times, only guys are ones closed. Um, 52 to 57. Well, here's 56.52 seconds, which is within this time period, right? And then 57 is within this time period. So only between here and here is there going to be any overlap. So that's why I've got it there. Okay, and then we can see guys are ones closed between 6, 76 and 78, and guys are one is open at that time, so there's no overlap there. Guys are ones closed at 86.52, which is before 87, but then you can see guys are two is closed at 87. 87 is between these times, and then we've got 88.93, guys are ones open. Uh, so it's only going to be, be between 87 and 88.93 where they're both closed. Okay, so so within the first 90 or so seconds, these are the times they are both closed, right? And if we have a look on Desmos, this is when we can kind of see that when are they both between there it's between here and here and it's it's harder to it's harder to see you can kind of see that but it's sort of actually easier to see if you if you write up this thing now why does this pattern continue every 60 seconds let's just let's just have a look and remember that this one here has a period of 30 and this one here has a period of 60 minutes right so every 60 minutes they're actually this pattern of these two is going to repeat yeah because let's look here this is the first time where they're both at the same temperature and now if we keep it going here not going to be at the same and right there they're both at the same temperature again you can see the picture it looks the same and that's after 60 seconds right and and so that pattern is just going to keep repeating if we go another 60 seconds you can see here now that's repeating, right? So every 60 seconds, it's going to be the same. So all of those times, these these times here, where they are both closed, are going to just repeat it themselves every 60 seconds. So that's why 27 plus 60, that's why this is 87, right? And so this one, I'm going to add 60. And that's going to be the next time where both of them are closed, okay? Which is why... Which is why I've gone here, and of course now um, I figured that out in context, right? Because 27 minutes after midnight, of course, is 12:27 a.m. And um, I don't know why I've I've <laughs> that's 20 should be a 29 there, and then 56 minutes after midnight is 12:56, so to 12:57. So those when they that's when they're both closed, right? And that's going to repeat itself every 60 minutes. So it's going to repeat itself every hour. Okay. So this is now we could could make a generalized thing where it's going to repeat itself every... Oh, sorry. I've got a cat here that's really messing with me. Messing, messing with my computer. Um, it's repeating itself every 27 minute of the hour and every 28th minute of the hour it's going to be closed from there to there and it's going to be closed every stop every 56.5 minute to 57 okay we um n is every hour okay um sorry this is hard to concentrate i've got a small child and a cat messing with me um i'm not giving the best explanation for this what i'm trying to say here if n n is n is zero that will give me the the first time because 12 is like zero on the 24 hour clock so zero 27 okay and and then one will give me one 27 one 56 two will give me two 56 etc etc this is this is the general idea for what you should what we'll be doing at excellence okay it's a it's a gen we're generalizing it we're, we're looking at just what's happening forever okay um Let's just, sorry, if we've just basically found some times where they're both closed, that's basically what you're looking at for merit there. Okay, I'm 10 seconds away from running out of time. I'm going to ramble no more. We'll talk about this more next week anyway.